sweeties how are you doing welcome to naya sim if this is your first time of coming across this channel so you have kindly smart that subscribe button and turn your notifications so you are notified each time i upload and please give this video a thumb up i appreciate you all so much and i am saying a very big shout out to everyone of you for all the love and support you are showing me here with i am super grateful and you all are super sweet so today i before we get into this video i am going to say a very big shout out to our caribbean sister joy reed she is super amazing she actually came all through she actually started by saying that you can imagine having a history so bad so violent that you have to make it illegal to learn you all know what has been going on or what it's going on especially in florida not just on in florida and some other states like i keep saying one thing is that when they find out that something is working in social and social states another state will just emulate what they are doing greg abby and the rest of them are now the people that are also ban everything black ban everything about woke so it's it is spreading from from florida down to some other texas mississippi and the rest of it now let's get into it she actually came out to say you can imagine having white people most of them knowing that they are being used because it's been the capitalism that has been going on and all that so they are trying so hard to indoctrinate them especially the kids because they really they are putting so much confusion because they do not even want them to understand and know what is going on each time they wake up they tell them that black people are their problem but not until they are fully awake they will know what it's going on they will know that they are being used not just only against black people even against themselves because i watched a video where they said why they did not make public uh, health care uh uh like free was because black people are going to benefit from it okay Black people are not benefiting for are not benefiting from it. The poor white people are not also benefiting from it. So they know that there is so much power if eventually white people, black people, people of color wake up against their capitalism and against their all their bullshit. I am rolling this clip. We'll come back to talk about it. I absolutely want to read all your comments. Let me know what you all think. Imagine having a history so bad, so vile, so violent that you have to make it illegal to learn it. American conservatives have gone by many names. They've been called Democrats. They've been called Republicans. They've been called the Lily Whites. They've been called Klansmen, Redemptionists. They've gone by many names. But the consistent thing about American conservatism is that it has been about ensuring that capital fully controls labor and that capital controls labor without being taxed to the greatest extent possible. So they want control of labor and they don't want to be taxed. I mean, that's what the American Revolution was about, right? Think about the fact that the time that this country has had perfect, pristine capitalism was during the slavery period. This country became an empire in less than 200 years, unprecedented in the world, based on the fact that you had pure capitalism. Labor costs were a minimum. You didn't have to spend extra money feeding the enslaved people. You just fed them the scraps, right? That's why we, the Caribbeans eat oxtail. They eat the ox, you get the tail, right? You just feed them the scraps, the chitlings. Think about all the food that African-Americans eat that is considered you know, endemic African-American food. It's based on the scraps, chicken wings, neck bones. You're basically eating the main food and throwing the things you don't want to the enslaved people. It's just that enslaved people were really super creative and made that shit tasty, right? But they were still eating the scraps of the food you had. So no extra cost there. You just throw them into a cabin, right? On the property you already own. No extra cost for that. The main costs were spillage, meaning people running away. <laughs> and there was a lot of that, right? Uh, rebellions. And that kind of thing was like very risky. Abortion. Enslaved women taking herbs and things 
to abort the babies that you put into them by rape or through forced breeding, right? Which deprives you of property, uh, valuable property. Um, Thomas Jefferson is one of the people who, you know, sort of revolutionized the idea of forced breeding, right? And so your costs were fairly minimal as long as you can minimize the number of people who run away. And you usually did that through extreme violence. But this was pure capitalism. And the big capitalists in this country have been trying to replace that system ever since. Remember, this capital, this human capital is worth $4 billion at the time of the Civil War. And people became phenomenally rich with no income tax in the in what became the United States of America before the 20th century when the income tax was passed, the federal income tax. And so you're talking about huge amounts of untaxed generational wealth. The big capitalists have been trying to replace that system ever since, whether it's with impoverished Irish labor or Italian labor, Chinese labor to build the railroads for pennies, you know, pennies on the dollar, working for as cheap as possible, annexing places like Puerto Rico and using that labor to supplement the cheapest labor you can get, right? Grabbing and creating an empire, grabbing Hawaii, grabbing as many territories as you can, where you can then take that labor and make that your new cheap labor source. It's why we have uh, an increasingly brown country because it just kept grabbing different brown people to do the work for cheap. But that's like really, in you know, fundamental to creating a lucrative capitalist empire. And the reason that conservatives are so freaked out by the idea of people learning real history, right? And why they want to replace real history with this actually absurd pretend history, like the Prager U stuff, where they basically say, it's better to be a slave than to be killed. Slavery was no big deal. Slavery is as old as time and has taken place in every corner of the world even amongst the people I just left. Being taken as a slave is better than being killed, no? Before you judge, you must ask yourself, what did the culture and society of the time treat as no big deal? And trying to get, you know, modern children to believe absolutely ridiculous stuff when they can actually learn more on TikTok, to get them to believe that Frederick Douglass <laughs> was in favor of slowing down that whole emancipation thing. Children, our founding fathers knew that slavery was evil and wrong, and they knew that it would do terrible harm to the nation. They wanted it to end, but their first priority was getting all 13 colonies to unite as one country. The southern colonies were dependent on slave labor, and they wouldn't have joined a union that had banned it. Are you okay with that? I'm certainly not okay with slavery, but the Founding Fathers made a compromise to achieve something great, the making of the United States. It was America that began the conversation to end it. But Leo is correct that big problems need to be approached very carefully. Come on. And even trying to get them to, you know, think poorly of white abolitionists. Have you kids heard of William Lloyd Garrison? No. Nope. He's an abolitionist like me, and he and I used to be friends, but we aren't any longer. We don't agree how to solve problems. William refuses all compromises, demands immediate change, and if he doesn't get what he wants, he likes to set things on fire. Sounds familiar. Sounds like you know the type. Yeah, we've got that type in our time. So, you're trying to work for change inside of the American system. Precisely, Layla. Our system is wonderful. And the Constitution is a glorious liberty document. We just need to convince enough Americans to be true to it. The reason they're doing that is they're, what they're afraid of, right, is that they know, like I know, that the research says that when white children learn real history, including the bad parts, and let's be clear, there are a lot of bad, really violent parts of American history, they don't learn to hate themselves. The research shows they just become more empathetic. That when black kids learn real history and brown kids learn real history, they simply get higher self-esteem because they understand there's nothing inherently wrong with them and that the challenges that people who look like them face are down to systemic racism and oppression. It isn't something wrong with them. But the white kids, they don't hate themselves as a result of learning. They become more empathetic. But the risk of that 
is that they then will support policies that reduce the power of capital and increase the power of labor. They'll start to side with the picketers and not the industrialists or the uh, big media companies, right? They'll side with the people in the desks and the cubicles and not the CEOs. They'll side with the poor and not the rich. They'll side with the workers and not the bosses. And that's risky because when they start to side with the workers and not the bosses, they might actually vote to tax capital. They might vote to regulate capital. And taxes and regulation are the things that the conservatives fear the most. And so when they go to these strategies of stoking division, interracial conflict, racism, uh, ginning up, whether it's white versus black racism and anti-blackness or intra non-white racism and pushing Asian versus black and pitting us against each other. All of this is strategic, y'all, because what they are afraid of is that their kids will combine with and side with and unite with black and brown and Asian American kids across a generation and regulate capital and tax capital and that the policies that they will support in the future when they're in control will make labor more powerful versus capital. It's all about the Benjamins. It's all about money. And it's all about keeping labor down and capital way on top. See what you're seeing. Understand what they're doing in their strategies, whether it's voter suppression, trying to control women's reproduction to drive more and more women out of the workforce out of the workforce and create less labor competition for men right trying to deprive black people of access to higher education think about all the things they're doing all of these strategies are about making capital particularly white male capitalists more and more and more powerful the way they were in the original version this country because for them that was the good old days see what you're seeing wake up stay united and stay woke oh my goodness i love to hear things like this i love to listen to i enjoy read is just one one of the most like one of the most brilliant sisters that like you know i love to listen to her TikTok videos and this one is absolutely very brilliant and the rest of it and to tell you the truth the truth is that they know what they are doing they know the power I mean the power of coming together the power of bringing down capitalism because this is what they are fighting tooth and nail to make sure that uh, there will be no unity and if you all understand, that's why this is what indoctrination, this is one of the reasons why they want to indoctrinate their kids. To under, like to uh, not see some certain things that happened during slavery and the history, the foundation of their, of their existence. They are trying so hard to cover it up. Why? Number one is that uh, they understand that uh, if eventually, like the white, like I keep saying, the white kids or the, all of them wake up one one day and decide that, man, we are tired of what we are going through and uh, it is time to unite with black people, brown people and fight what is fighting everybody. They know what is going to happen. That it is all over for them. No more money for them. They know that if they wake up one day and say, we are not standing with the bosses anymore. We are not standing with the top people. We are standing with the workers. Let's fight all this. Let's sit together. It is all over for them. So they are looking, like I keep saying, I will never stop saying this. The poor the poor white people, I mean, the rich white people actually made the poor white people to think that their problems are coming from black people. When black people are not even their problem. 
So like I keep saying, they know what they are doing. They are trying as much as they can to cover up something. But how do you want to? You can imagine having a history that you are so ashamed of teaching. That's why they said black American history is very, very violent. That's why they want to ban everything that got to do with black people. But then black people are already woke. And that woke is something they are never going back from. But whatever they are fighting, whatever they are doing, black people know they knew. But number one is that, uh, like I, like this, when I, each time I say that, uh, each time we talk about race, it makes them uncomfortable. Right? But when we don't talk about it, it gets black people killed. So are we going to, yeah, we, I, I am going to make you uncomfortable because I don't want anybody to die. Uncomfortable? I am going to make you so, so much uncomfortable. They don't want to talk about race. They don't want to talk about nothing, nada. And number one is that, you see, they are really trying so hard. That indoctrination, that's why some I, re, I there are some videos that I watched and I am like, some of them are screaming. I never learned anything about black history. We never learned about Tulsa, Oklahoma. Even, I remember one, what was this man's name? A very top actor who actually said it was few years ago that he learned about Tulsa, Oklahoma. I mean, few years ago. And he was asking America, how far, what happened? Why is it that I am just getting to know this? So they know, really do know what they are doing. That's why some of them come out to, to argue ignorantly. They do not know anything. They did not teach them anything. Some of them don't read books. They are just lucky that they, they speak on English. Because sometimes when people speak English, you think, oh, yeah, they are very smart. Ooh. Yeah, so this is it. Not until they stop all this indoctrination they are doing, but then I am going to keep encouraging black people, please do not, not even for a minute, let this history die. Because it is... Transfer something you are going to pass on, you keep passing it on, you keep passing it on. That is when it will not die. But when you stop talking about it, when you stop teaching them, when you stop saying it. But I am grateful that Black American history is well documented. If you search anything online, you will see it. So the lies and propaganda they are about to we never work there are also so many channels out there putting out things that is going on and the things that happened this is where i am gonna draw the curtain thank you so much and i will see you all in my next video bye for now